My Villanova colleagues, my name is Larry Reagan. I'm the director of the Center for Online Innovation in Learning at Penn State. It's a research and development unit that's been funded by Penn State's World Campus. Gabrielle had asked that I share a little bit of the evolution of the World Campus with you. And to do that literally is to go back in time. And I want to share with you sort of the roots of Penn State's World Campus, but then also talk about what that led to in, in terms of serving as the foundation for what we call today Penn State's World Campus. So in 1892, we had the Rural Free Delivery Act. Now, I know that was a little bit before the internet was uh, a buzz, but uh, this Rural Free Delivery Act was really like the first information superhighway because it guaranteed mail delivery to any of our constituents in the United States. That began a correspondence type program with uh, primarily a farming uh, agricultural based uh, community and began the exchange of research and new information with, with that population. In the 20s, we moved to radio and we used uh, extension service to broadcast radio programs. Again, sort of an informal learning experience. But it got us thinking about and using the technologies of the day, if you will, to communicate new information to our constituent groups. In the 40s and the 50s, we now had closed circuit television. This wasn't so much broadcast externally from the university, but was set up within Penn State in order to serve large enrollment classes. So we might have a faculty member sitting in his office or in a studio, and then students of 200 or 300 sitting in large lecture halls or auditoriums receiving the broadcast. This didn't last real long, but it gave us and started to whet our appetite for the use of higher end technologies, and in particular, in this case, video technology. Today we have WPSU, which is a part of the outreach program here at Penn State. This was really the start of it back in the 40s and the 50s. Then we moved to what really became known as Penn State's distance education program. From 1960s through up till the 90s, almost till the end of the 1990s, uh, we used correspondence study. And um, for example, I took Finance 101 as a, as a resident-based student here at Penn State in 1979. I took their correspondence study because I needed those three credits. And um, the, the method and the communication was between me and my faculty member. It was kind of a self-study guide, but I mailed in my materials to the faculty member who would then grade it and give me a response. The, the challenge with this, of course, was that our learners were isolated as individuals of one, and the time of that educational transaction could be two weeks, three weeks, which as you know, if you're trying to complete your course of study, can take a little bit of time. However, that background set us up for the internet. And in 1998, we launched Penn State's World Campus. The World Campus was Penn State's way of communicating to people who could not attend a geographic location of Penn State and receive edu educational resources from Penn State. Today, we have about 92 different programs. We serve about 16,000 students. I think it's 65,000 enrollments per year. I just want to go over a little bit of the background of what this did for us in terms of the foundation. So my props aren't behaving, but you get the idea. So the first was that this process of evolution helped us understand the idea of transactions with learners at a distance. The World Campus actually correspond and study was the first unit at Penn State that was able to take credit card transactions because we couldn't see our learners. And aside from sending in checks, uh, we eventually instituted credit card and um, we became a model for the rest of the university. We also understood, and this was really important, this idea of educational transactions. What does a course mean? What does a course of study and an educational experience mean for learner and faculty members? This was really the system, the correspondence study, that got us thinking deeply about that. And it set the stage for us to move to the internet in the world campus. Some adjustments and changes, but really set the stage. In that process, we really came to understand the needs of adult learners and how they were different than our resident-based students. This set off a whole field of study. Uh, we, we learned that they are more self-directed, more self-motivated, more self-managed and we had to adjust our learning materials to take advantage of and to serve that population. We did all of this, of course, with academic support. 
because Penn State's World Campus and Distance Learning Program really was not an academic resource or an academic unit. We were a delivery system. So we developed very close ties with our academic support groups. As a matter of fact, the revenue generated from these programs goes directly back to our academic partners in, in, in order to fund their, their initiatives. And this is probably the, the most critical feature of all, and that is a positive revenue stream. Now let me just tell you, in the beginning, Correspondent Study served as a support system for the, for the beginning of the World Campus. It took us about five years to actually begin realizing a positive cash flow out of the World Campus. Those resources today, however, do a great deal to fund and support our academic programs, and many of which have come to realize and, and depend upon the extra revenue that is coming in to serve their populations. I hope this gives you a little bit of the background of our experience. I'm really looking forward to interacting with you in a couple weeks. I hope you have lots of questions. Um, so give me some softballs and some hardballs and we'll have some fun and I'll uh, hopefully see you very shortly. Thank you.